Hey, what's going on team? It's Ricky with Tactical Solutions. I hope that you guys are all having an amazing day. I'm going to start sharing my screen just so you guys can see exactly what it is that we're going to be covering today. If this is your guys' first time tuning on in, don't forget to subscribe. We are the largest YouTube channel in the world and we are the largest private Facebook group that is free for those who day trade in the stock market. Since last week, our free Facebook group has grown with over 2,000 members. So again, if you guys want to join our community, that's going to be that second link down below that will help you join our free Facebook group. So for all those that are going to be asking and that are joining us for the first time, I am using the TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim platform. It's right here on the top left hand side. Friendly reminder, this is simply the platform that I use. It's not the platform that is best for everyone. It's not the best trading platform out there. There's interactive brokers. There's, if you want to test it out, Robinhood, Webull. Uh, there's so many amazing platforms out there. And all I want to say is just because I use or I do something does not mean that that is the best approach for you. We're all about sharing ideas with an open mind. And one of the things that I want to make sure that I empower you to do is that not even for just my videos, but anyone that you're watching on YouTube, there is no such thing as a perfect working system for everyone. So with that being said, be open to the idea of testing things out, see if they work well for you, the series of things that you learn from other people. But at the end of the, at the, end of the day, your goal should not to be to copy other people, but it should be to simply understand that you know we are all here to figure out our own way to get that same end result, which is in a sense, grow our accounts, either invest or make a profit as day traders. So I really hope that you guys smash that like button if and only if, of course, I earn it. I hope that within this video, I can get you one step closer to your overall goal. So it <laughs> uh, looks like we have some funny comments going on right here. I'm gonna start saying what's up to everyone. So if you're tuning on in to the live stream, feel free just to say hello or maybe where you're tuning on in from. It's been a pretty crazy week. There's so many different states within the United States that are going under like mandatory quarantine. So uh, it, it's pretty unfortunate, especially in the Arizona area. Almost everything is shut down. What's going on? I see Bass. Friendly reminder, you don't have to pay for me to break down your stock. Just post it in the ticker call-out format. So we got Luis from El Paso. We got David from is that Massachusetts. Uh, oh shoot, here they go. Here they start coming on in. So let's see. Uh, we got Nicholas in the house. What's going on, brother? So we got is that Duvin from Colorado? What's going on, Raphael? So here, give my wife a, whoa, uh, give my, where is it, where'd it go? So give, I'm trying to get her hooked on the name. Her name is Haley Madrid. So Haley Madrid, how you doing? What's going on? Hope you're having an amazing weekend. And if you're trying to get started in the stock market, a great way to start is to paper trade. It's free. If you have extra time, there's no excuse unless you really don't see value in the stock market. But at the end of the day, if you're all about empowering yourself and surrounding yourself with like-minded people, take it with, you know, just take it at ease, right? There's nothing wrong with learning something new, especially if there's a free way in doing it. So we got uh, Dale, we got Richie, we got Mullen. So what's going on, guys? We got Nick from Kansas. What's going on, team? So Sweden here. What's going on, Ted? El Paso, Texas. What's going on, Tony? Nick, we got Kansas. Here we go, Mullen. All right, what's going on? Ooh, <laughs> all right, Trevor. Uh, let's let's be a little respectful, please. So, uh, Lil Gans from Houston, Texas. All right, guys. Well, all together, I really hope uh, and I'm really grateful uh, that you guys took time out of your Sunday to tune on into this live stream. I hope that um, out of this entire live stream, uh, I dedicate to break down whatever stock you see Val in. This is just where we can simply take time, share ideas with one another. Uh, and at the end of the day, if you see value in any of these stocks, it doesn't mean that you have to trade it or that you have to invest in it. The whole idea with this is I really hope that you can just cherry pick, right? Um, and be extremely selective with what you choose to add to your watch list. In a sense, then you can simply follow up with it. And then if you see a trade or an investment opportunity, then you can decide and create a whole plan around that. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. All I ask you to do is if you would like me to break down the stock that you see value in, please just post it in the ticker call out format. You're going to be seeing that uh, one of our other accounts right now is going to be sharing the ticker call out format and all that empowers you to do is to make sure that you've planned out your trade before you actually take it. And I think that's something that again, we're just here to empower you just to make sure that you at least think about 
the trade opportunity rather than just hoping and doing without any kind of like risk management, if you get what I mean. So um, again, don't forget to smash that like button if you guys feel like we earned it. So uh, here we go. So, all right, let's do it, let's do it. So we have a couple people sharing different stocks, but none are in the ticker call out format. So I'm kind of bummed right now. We have people talking about you guys and Diaz. We have people about TVIX, JNUG, here it goes. So the TechBuds Garage page is posting the ticker call-out format. Here we go. So our first person, we got DWT. Um, there is one thing that I do want to share with you guys is there's news and there's this article by Citigroup uh, that is being shared that both UWT and DWT might get delisted. Um, so altogether, please take that into consideration uh, before trying to hold it overnight, right? If I'm not mistaken, and don't quote me on this, uh, it's April 2nd that this is supposed to be put in effect. Uh, so I know that it's, if I'm not mistaken, a week or two from today. So please be very careful with this entire position. But I'll be, I'd be more than happy to break it down for you. Uh, so here we go, we got DWT. One of the things that I like to do is I like to go on the overall 180 day chart. Uh, one of the things that we have seen is that as crude oil was aggressively selling off, uh, DWT was aggressively pushing up, right? Uh, due to this unfortunate news, if I'm not mistaken, this happened a couple days ago, um, DWT began to pull back. It is finding somewhat of a support. It's trying to formulate this reversal, but I don't know if it would make it through. I had an awesome day on Friday um, at a 17% growth day. Um, so one of the things that I wanna share with you guys is um, a lot of people tend to overlook this is you know it did gap up at one point up 17% but a majority of that movement was done during the pre-market session and if you didn't partake in that from actually you know normal trading hours um, it really did more consolidation or it really gave back more than it actually gained yeah I did have a couple runs but at the end of the day it made a majority of its growth um, during the pre-market session. So please make sure that you take that into consideration. Um, overall, also on the 180 day chart, it's still trading below the EMA line. Obviously, if this thing begins to run and you see intraday opportunity, this is something that I would view right now as a high risk, high reward. I would not feel comfortable holding this overnight and it would be strictly just a day trade if you see a clear direction and the risk to reward ratio to be in your favor. So I set an alert if it breaks above 1550, but just as much as it could go up, it can go down as well. So one of the things that I'm gonna be doing here is setting my alert for the break below 950. Again, I would really encourage you if you have not read that article from Citigroup about the potential delisting from UWT and DWT, I would really, really, really encourage you to read it, especially if even for a second you want to potentially swing trade UWT or DWT, please take time, inform yourself. You have nothing but time, right? Take time, inform yourself. And if you still feel like you see this trade opportunity, then just set up a plan and try to, to the best of your abilities, set yourself up for success. So let's go ahead and I wanna break down a couple more. We're gonna be breaking down about um, nine to 10 different stocks within this video. And at the end of the video, I'm going to be sharing a couple different thoughts with you guys about overall market conditions. If you guys could see NASDAQ, Dow Jones, and S&P 500 are all down right now. So please, this comes at no surprise. If you guys saw my video on Friday, if I'm not mistaken, I tried to remind people that again, a day trade should not turn into a swing trade and holding something overnight just because it didn't go according to plan is never in my experience a good idea. So let's go ahead and break down a couple stocks that you guys might see value in and then we can go into that. So um, it looks like a lot of people are sharing stocks but none in the ticker call out format. So it doesn't, it doesn't take very long to set up your plan. You guys could see the ticker call out format is right there. Um, yeah, so yeah, no, we're getting a lot of people sharing their stock. Why, why are we struggling so much today in sharing it in the ticker call out format? Oh, here we go. So we got day trade AAPL. Let's go ahead and break that one down. So AAPL, here we go. So this is Apple overall descending pattern. Uh, one of the things that I want to remind you is that this one very closely follows overall market direction. 
And because, and again, I can pull this up right here, uh, you can see that the overall market future for NASDAQ is already down almost 4%. And there it goes, 3.94%. We made overall lows because the futures market already opened. So if you guys do not understand the correlation between uh, the future and uh, the forward slash NQ um, and the overall market, right? So if this continues to sell off, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, and all of those will most likely follow if they closely follow overall market direction. So because this is down, it would not be much of a surprise. So what I'm trying to share with you is that it would not be much of a surprise to see Apple open up in the red as well. Obviously, if there's a fundamental reason that Apple should see an increase, then that's a little bit different if it experiences a positive catalyst. But at the end of the day, Apple, as of now, is following the market very, very closely. Overall market direction for Apple um, is again a descending pattern. So because of that, yeah, you might see a day trade opportunity. And again, this is just my opinion, but one of the things that I can share with you guys is that for myself at least, it is so much easier to experience a successful day trade when the overall direction is in my favor, not against my favor. So if you've been someone that's struggled to make a profit, ask yourself, are you trying to buy the dip and you know um, of an overall descending pattern and would it make more sense to just focus on whatever's actively uptrending something that you can take into consideration right uh, so uh, Teddy that still is not the ticker call it format so Apple has spiked the last couple of weeks uh, okay um, I wouldn't say it spiked because it made overall lows right on Friday so it's still showing signs of a descending pattern which isn't too attractive as of right now. So, all right, so day trading JNUG in the future when the virus is over. Okay, I, I can see why you're paying attention to that since it's aggressively sold off, but that has to do more with our, um, I, I wouldn't say that it aggressively began to sell off due to overall market condition. Um, I would closely follow more gold than anything. Uh, and you have to understand that JNUG is a gold miner um, so that's something that you probably want to take into consideration as well. So we got JNUG here and then we have, okay, so we have JNUG twice. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and break that down. So here we go. So I already talked about it. One of the things that I've shared before is that JNUG is a gold miner ETF. Um, feel free to take time and inform yourself a little bit more about how these trade. Uh, there are the correlating ETFs as well as an NUGT, something that you guys might want to take into consideration. Uh, I have found these to follow gold a little bit closer. And then there's DUST, which is the inverse, right? But overall, so we have JNUG right here. The inverse of JNUG is JDST. Uh, JNUG is Again, and I know I want to ask you guys this for all those that are tuning in right now. So JNUG is super oversold, right? So we could see this on the 180 day chart. So like, let's say you've worked for the past 10 years and you saved $50,000 looking at how JNUG is trading right now and how it's been trading for the past two months. Is this something that you would want to invest or trade with with your fifty thousand dollars that you've worked for the past five years for five or ten years is this really something that as of right now you would feel comfortable investing and if i were and, and for all those that are saying no why is your answer no so why would your answer be no not really, it's sketchy. So no way, wait for confirmation. No, keeping it super simple. I and, and, and again, think about every time that you've made kind of this like very beginner mistake. It's the very simple things in life that people overcomplicate. I try to repeat it. I know I sound like a broken record. Uh, I try to repeat it as much as possible. Yes, I do see JNUG to offer a reversal opportunity. I think anyone that understands technical analysis can see that JNUG is oversold. You know, it is at a very low price just because something is oversold and at a low price doesn't make it a good investment or a good trade. Just like all those four weeks ago that thought after we first received news of the coronavirus and the market began to sell off, they're like, oh, I'm investing here. Now, four weeks forward, they're down 30, 35 percent if they invest. Facebook, if they invested in Amazon, right? 
overall market condition and overall market direction has not changed and it is still descending. I'm not saying that there is no present opportunity. I think anyone that follows gold can easily say, right? Yes, there, there is an obvious opportunity here, but it pays to be patient. So I have a challenge for you. I have a challenge for anyone that is trying to buy the dip on anything. If it's oversold, if it's at overall 180 day lows, I have a challenge for you. You don't have to accept it, but I challenge you that if you're so certain, if you're so certain that this thing is going to pick up, if it's going to reverse, I challenge you to allow the opportunity to present itself. I would hate for you to be someone that enters and then it just simply continues to sell off. It's, it's the very simple things in life that people overcomplicate. So if you think that, again, if you thought the bottom was on Thursday and then on Friday it drops another nearly 20%, it is the simple things in life that people overcomplicate. Do you want to be down 20%? Do you want to be down 50%? Then all you have to do is, again, there's obviously much more that goes into it. I'm not, I'm not trying to you know, dumb it down. I'm just saying that it's, again, the initial steps, I feel like where a lot of us mess up. And I'm, I'm no excuse. I've made this mistake so many times. So please don't think that I'm trying to put myself in a pedestal. I understand how important it is to wait for confirmation. So for everyone watching this video right now, it pays to be patient. If you're so certain that something's going to reverse, and I challenge you to wait for confirmation. I think that we can all respect that, right? If you are someone that is just determined for a high risk, high reward to go in right now, and you're just like, I'm gonna hold through, at the end of the day, you're the only one that can hold yourself accountable. And you know, uh, you, you do you. I'm just here to share based off of my experience and my opinion, what has worked for me and what hasn't. So I'm gonna set my alerts here and I feel like that's all we can do. If you see an opportunity on JNUG, great. Set your alerts and maybe follow up with it when it begins to make a little bit more sense. So we got IC Bass sharing it in the ticker call out format. So we got ticker, uh, ticker symbol ZM. All right, let's see if we have another one. Ticker symbol JDST. All right, so we got ZM and then we got ticker symbol JDST. So I appreciate you posting that in the ticker call out format. So overall, JDST was again, uh, experiencing a very aggressive push. It went up to highs of 44.80. It aggressively pulled back, made overall lows at $3.70. Had an amazing day on Friday, cool. At the end of the day, this thing is still not making higher highs and it's not showing signs of an uptrend. It's still getting rejected by the email line. And yeah, I do agree that it has a lot of upside potential based off of what it's shown us before. But at the end of the day, patterns tend to repeat themselves. They do not have to. So if you're so, so certain, it's still the same concept and same principle that we talked about on JNUG. And it's if you're so certain that a reversal is going to happen, I challenge you to wait for confirmation. The really cool thing about this is that if you really like gold, if you like JDST and you like JNUG and that's your niche, this is not something that I trade very often. That's your niche and you wanna take time to inform yourself about how they move, why they move, and the different factors that influence them and the risk involved, I think that's great. My goal for each and every single one of you is not to trade what I trade, but to take time and inform yourself and pursue a niche within the market that you and only you see value in and that you take time to inform yourself. I'm really happy that you, um, again, asked me to break that one down. So we got ticker symbol ZM. I wanna see why it is that you wanted me to break this one down. So widely used in school for CV. Uh, resistance is 120. Uh, or support is 120, resistance is 135. So one of the things that I have to say is that we can all respect this overall uptrend pattern. We actually talked about ZM, um, if I'm not mistaken, last weekend or the weekend before, and it was when it was doing a lot of consolidation here. It obviously made new highs, looking at the MACD, looking at the RSI, on the technical side, it looks overbought. So a question that I would ask you is, this does not look like a good deal anymore. It looks like it has pullback potential, but if there's a fundamental reason on why it's rising, 
then again, I do understand that why it can continue to increase in value. Altogether, I'm saying on the technical aspect, I find this to be more overbought than it is oversold. Therefore, it's not much of a good deal and it wouldn't be much of a surprise if this thing does begin to pull back. But again, I do respect the overall uptrend pattern and your focus on something that is proactively increasing in value. I think I think that again, your overall you know, focus is you know, paying attention to the right things. I just think that this is more overbought than it is oversold. So let me go ahead and I want to break down about uh, four to five more stocks. And then uh, am I am I cutting out? Let me see. How's the live stream? Oh, it looks like the live stream got paused. I do apologize for that. So hopefully um, you, you caught most of that. But um, I do. I do apologize. I don't know what's going on with that. So let me go ahead and break down. Oh, yeah, Tesla. Um, I want you guys to know that um, just like many of you guys from the very beginning, uh, Tesla, I think, stands for everything, you know, an entrepreneur wants to become. He's like the real life almost Iron Man, right? Um, he's got these electric cars. He's got a spaceship company. Um, brilliant dude, right? All together, one of the things that I want to ask you is, first of all, on the technical aspect, mark, the, the stock market is not doing well due to the coronavirus and due to our reaction of the coronavirus and this global impact it is having. All I want to first then share with you is if the market continues to sell off, Tesla will most likely follow. The second thing that I want to talk about, this is my opinion, and please just take it as that, but I want you to ask yourself, Tesla, if we were to go into a recession, Tesla is not a necessity. Obviously, there is news of Tesla working with our government or our overall, um, yeah, our government and creating uh, these series of mechanisms that can help, in a sense, not contain the coronavirus, uh, but uh, what were they? They're like filters or something like that. Obviously, they can be, you know, uh, they can see a positive impact because of that, but altogether, Tesla and for what it stands for, I personally, in my honest opinion, if we were to go into a recession, I do not see Tesla as a necessity. It is not a company in which we need during a global recession. Therefore, it's not very cash rich based off of my understanding. And altogether, when it comes down to all the different companies that are, you know, very sustainable and have done well for a very long period of time. It's really been the past maybe six months that Tesla saw this very aggressive bullish run uh, that I've never really seen before. It almost traded like a penny stock and a momentum stock. And one of the things that I want to share with you, and please, you know, uh, feel free to uh, share your own opinion as well of Tesla if you guys want to share it in the comment section. I personally just do not think Tesla is essential enough to our global economy for what it stands for to sustain through a global recession. I do believe that Tesla is an amazing company and for what it is, people try to call it a tech company. At the end of the day, they're a car maker and I just do not think that through a global recession that it's cash rich enough or necessary enough for it to make it through. Again, because of that, I think as altogether, as the market continues to sell off, Tesla will most likely simply follow. So um, yeah, I, I just wanted to at least share that with you. Um, I do agree, it did have a nice push. Uh, I think it was on Wednesday or on Thursday once we heard that news of it helping the government. Um, I just do not think that this thing's gonna sustain or hold itself for a very long period of time. And I think that it's only a matter of time for it to continue to sell off, especially due to overall market again direction. So, so does delisted mean that DWT or UWT will die out, cannot trade no more? So I would encourage you for all those that are asking questions about delisting is I already have a video on YouTube about a stock getting delisted and what that means. Uh, pretty much in very simple terms is if I'm not mistaken, you will have the shares available at whatever it is that their payoff is and all you can do is then sell it. But yeah, you are correct. You're not going to be able to buy anymore or trade it anymore after that. So I would encourage you, feel free to call your brokerage, feel free to call whatever trading platform it is that you use and call them and ask them, hey, what if I hold the UWT? and it gets delisted, what happens to my shares? And they can easily explain it to you as well. So SQQQ and UVXY. 
So that's uh, that's a little bit more up my alley. So I will break that one down in just a little bit. Okay, so we got Mark sharing that one. So I do appreciate that. I've talked about SQQQ for such a long period of time. Um, again, one of the first things that I talked about is four or five weeks ago when we first got the unfortunate news of the coronavirus and we saw it have a direct negative influence on our overall stock market. I wanted to remind people that I did not know where the bottom was going to be. I did not expect it to get to this point. All I knew was I didn't think that we've seen the worst yet because we didn't have a vaccine and with viruses, again, when there's no vaccine, it quickly spreads. So with that being said, I, again, it's my first time going through a pandemic to this, you know, uh, tier, but overall there is no question that if you do not understand the correlation between forward slash NQ, which is the NASDAQ future and SQQQ, I would encourage you to take time and learn about how they move and how they work together. Overall, if the overall stock market or overall NASDAQ continues to sell off, for, or SQQQ will most likely continue to uptrend. It pretty much does the exact opposite. The inverse ETF of SQQQ is TQQQ. So this does the same that the overall market does. So you guys can see here that again, as forward slash NQ continue to sell off and it's opening up. It's already down 3.72%. That means that if the market holds where it's at, that we will most likely see SQs have a really big green day tomorrow and most likely open up at 35 or above. So again, if your focus is direction and you continue to see that the market's not getting any better and the market is selling off, so there's a direct correlation, then this is something that you can add to your watch list and follow up with it. If you see that correlation and you see that opportunity, shoot, I know people in our Learn Plan Profit group that are literally just holding SQQQ as things don't get any better for our overall market. And they've been doing it since the very beginning. That's the way that they are approaching the market. As the market sells off, they make more money off of SQs. It's not everyone's approach. Just because it's working for someone doesn't mean that it's going to have to work for you. I would take time and inform yourself about TQQQ or TQQQ or three Qs, uh, SQQQ and forward slash NQ and how they work well. Again, it doesn't mean that you have to trade it. All I'm here to share is it is important or at least in my opinion, uh, in, at least in my opinion uh, beneficial for you to understand the correlation on how overall market condition works so um, there we go um, the other one that was shared uh, was what was it it wasn't TVIX it was UV XY So uh, also uh, overall very similar. Um, again, overall market sells off. If the market rises, then UVXY sells off. Obviously, we've seen this thing show signs of a just you guys can see right from when all this news began to happen. I want to see if I can show you guys the percentage gain. Uh, this one is definitely a little bit more aggressive. Um, this isn't something that I would encourage for everyone and um, as well you guys can look at the news section uh, the there is if I'm not mistaken an inverse of UV XY uh, and you guys can take a little bit of time to learn a little bit more about that and how they work well together but again if you like the way that this thing is trading and you understand the correlation between overall market selling off and this thing pushing up then this is something that you can add to your watch list and follow up with it when it begins to make sense but again I really do appreciate uh, you sharing this one with us. So um, here we go. Uh, ticker symbol VTI. What's going on, Jesus? So VTI, here we go. Um, okay, so Vanguard Total Ask Stake Market ETF. So looks like this one um, was doing really well when overall market conditions was showing signs of growth. I would honestly treat this very similar to TQQQ or SPY. If you guys aren't familiar with that, so TQQQ is selling off because NASDAQ is selling off. If we have SPY, this follows the S&P 500 and as the S&P 500 sells off, then SPY sells off. It looks like VTI shows a very similar pattern. It's selling off as the market sells off. So I ask you, does it make sense to buy this right now as the market is literally selling off as we speak. No, it, it doesn't mean that it's not 
a good investment. All it means is that it's not a good investment right now. We don't know where the bottom is at. So if you're so certain or you just see so much opportunity on VTI, there's nothing wrong with creating a separate watch list. I have one of these watch lists and a separate watch list of stocks that I see a lot of opportunity and a lot of potential in but are still selling off. There's nothing wrong with creating different watch lists. It's always something that I've tried to encourage and empower our viewers. It's I have my day trading watch list, which is the trades that I focus on almost on a daily basis. But on a weekly basis, I follow up with these different watch lists because they're in different reversal stages, if that makes sense. So, all right, I'm gonna break down uh, two more and then we can go from there. So, uh, so and okay, all right. All right, all right, here we go. Uh, yeah, so Nokia, very inconsistent. Looks like it's aggressively selling off. Again, following the market very, very closely. Looks like it had a really nice push up. MACD, RSI already overbought. Looks like it's just getting ready to pull back once again. We're not seeing higher highs right now. Now, as of right now, um, again, I would follow up with this on Monday, which is tomorrow, and see, does it follow the market and sell right back off? Or is this actually something that's making higher highs? I think that can give you a little bit more of a better understanding if this is something that you should pay attention to or not. So uh, I don't trade options, Mitch. I just, uh, yeah, so I wouldn't be much help with that, but I appreciate you asking. Uh, M-Y-T-U. So what is that, M-Y-T-U? Whoa, I think that was way off with A-Y-T-U. Mm -hmm. Here it goes. Uh, okay, so um, I we have almost one of these every single uh, Sunday stock talk. Since the coronavirus has been out, uh, there's a lot of bioscience, pharmaceutical, and yeah, there, there's a lot of pharmaceutical companies that are coming out of nowhere that have been selling off for the past five years and that all of a sudden they come out with a coronavirus vaccine, they go through this pending FDA approval process and they never make it through. Almost every single one will go through this hype session. It is literally a glorified pump and dump. Look at a screen, look at a, look at a screenshot of a definition of a pump and dump and it almost looks like this. I'm not here to bash any company. I hope that you guys know that. First of all, these momentum stocks or pump and dumps or coronavirus stocks are not something that I want to partake in. It's a very high risk, high reward. And I do agree, me like anyone else. I know that you can make money trading anything. That's not the idea. It's can you manage your risk accordingly and is the risk to reward ratio worth it? All I'm here to do is to share my opinion from my experience. And one of the things that I want to share with you is that this comes at a very high risk, high reward. And most often than not, and look at all of the ones that have been shared for the past you know, two months, they most likely always pull back because they don't end up going through FDA approval and they end up just going back to where they were trading at. And this is very unfortunate for beginner traders because they're caught in all the hype and then they don't know where to sell because it begins to pull back. They give back all their profits and they end up actually in the red. So all I want to share with you guys is do not trade or do not invest in anything in which you do not understand. That simple. If you do not understand why it's pushing up and what this stands for, then don't trade it. That simple, right? If you cannot make sense of the trade opportunity, you cannot make sense of the trade. I'm not here to bash anyone. I'm just trying to empower our beginner traders to be very selective with where they decide to put in their money. If you're learning how to trade, then focus on learning how to trade and not trading to make a profit when you're just getting started. Uh, but again, that is just my opinion and I'm here to remind you of that. Uh, VLRS. All right, let's see if we can end with a good one. VLRS. It's trading at $3, so I already don't like it. Yeah, um, aggressively selling off, no indication of a reversal. Yeah, I see it to be low price, oversold. It's a good deal, but it's not a good buy. It's not indicating signs of an uptrend. It's not giving me any reason to buy it now. How do I not know that this thing's gonna be trading at $1 one month from now? I don't. If anything, 
the overall it would make more sense for me to trade against this than it would for it because it's consistently selling off as the market consistently sells off so because of that instead of trying to predict a reversal i would rather stay patient and follow up with it when it begins to make sense so let's follow up with logan we got ticker symbol gm which is general motors if i'm not mistaken here we go had a green day on friday 2.43 percent looks like we're having a little bit of a laggy stream i do apologize for that oh did it end up freezing Ah. All right, let's see. Yeah, I know I see that. All right, so we're good now. All right, I do apologize. So again, overall, General Motors is still aggressively selling off. Yeah, it's trying to indicate signs of reversal, but as the market still sells off, I would not be surprised that this thing quickly follows. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, one of the things that I just wanted to share with you guys is um, I just don't want this, wow, low video output. I have no idea how this is still. Is it still lagging-ish? Okay, um, but one of the things that I wanted to do is, um, so it's still lagging a little bit. First of all, I do apologize for the unfortunate lag, not something that I uh, anticipated during this live stream is, uh, one of the last things that I wanted to share with you guys is in today's earlier video, I tried to do to the best of my ability, um, I made this video talking about, I created this little cheat sheet and I actually have it right here. Um, and all it shares, it's available for a free download. I actually uh, feel free to refresh your screen. I put it in the first link in the description. If you want to download it, you don't have to download it, but all it covers and this whole video breaks it down, the whole idea of how, if you're someone that's struggling to make a profit or grow your account in the stock market during the market selling off, I hope that this video or this overall cheat sheet can help put things a little bit more just can align things a little bit better. Overall, I talk about specific stocks and ETFs that go up when the market sells off. And that is simply what I wanted to make sure that I cover is as the market is not performing the best, it doesn't mean that you have to give up. It doesn't mean that you have to stop trading, right? Um, I'm a perfect example of this. And again, I don't mean to like gloat, but one of the things that I wanted to share with you guys is last week I had one of my most successful trading weeks this year so far. And it just shows how much opportunity is among us. And when the market is aggressively selling off, it doesn't mean that you have to give up. Just because something's difficult doesn't mean that it's impossible. It might just mean that you might have to shift your direction or your attention somewhere else, right? Something that is actually increasing in value as the market is selling off. So for all those that are struggling, I would encourage you to take a step back, maybe collect your thoughts and then begin to inform yourself about what goes up when the market sells off. And if things continue to get worse, what in a sense companies or what in a sense commodities or indexes end up increasing in value as we begin to see again, an overall unfortunate in a sense global recession. So I really do appreciate your guys' time. I try to, again, to the best of my ability, break down whatever stocks it is that you guys saw value in. So I'm really excited um, to be able to trade live uh, with you guys tomorrow. So I'm excited for that live trading session. Uh, we're going to be trading live at Market Open. So whenever it is that you guys are ready, if you guys are part of the Learn Plan Profit Group, just make sure that you guys set your alarms here in Arizona. The market opens at 6.30 a.m. So make sure that if you guys just joined our team, that you set your alarms and that you guys tune on in to our live trading session. So uh, I really do appreciate you guys' time. Don't forget to download your free cheat sheet for the stock market crash uh, PDF, and that's going to be that first link down below. I really hope that I earned your thumbs up. 
Friendly reminder, I have over 2,000 free videos on YouTube. If you're someone that's just getting started, subscribe. I have a helpful video playlist. There's so many videos that cover so many of the basics. All you need to do is take time and inform yourself and practice everything that you learn. Again, the goal is in life not to have things just come to you, but at least in my eyes, nothing in life worth having should ever come easy. And trust me, at least in my experience, the stock market is no exception. It's difficult, it's challenging, but in my honest opinion, it's one of the things that I enjoy most about the stock market. It's kind of like a crossword puzzle, right? I have to challenge myself every single morning to seek opportunity to challenge myself to you know allow an opportunity to present itself and also when things don't go according to plan i have to make sure that i challenge myself to manage my risk these are all in a sense things that we have to juggle every single day with new days new opportunities all you have to do is inform yourself about what and how an opportunity presents itself and which ones are worth taking so again i really hope that you guys can start your journey in learning more about the stock market what it has to offer and i just really hope that i can be that spark that just gets you started so again make sure that you guys stay connected if you guys want to learn a little bit more about the learn plan profit group and to see if it's a good fit for you that's going to be the third link down below if i'm not mistaken take a little bit of time if you guys would like to tune on into the live trading session then of course that's going to be the only way in doing so like always guys i really do appreciate you guys time and like always let's make sure that we in the year on a green note take it easy